meantime, a senior member of the Nigerian Bar and a senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, has provoked something of a mini storm by claiming that a former president of Nigeria, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan, is not qualified to contest for president again, going by the stipulations of the Nigerian constitution. According to him, the relevant constitutional provision is clear on the status and legibility of someone who is sworn into office to complete the term of office of another. As such, a person is unworthy by the letter and spirit of the laws of the land to be sworn in a second time. Well, we are now being joined for a discussion around this by a constitutional lawyer and public affairs analyst, Liberos Oshoma. Welcome to the program. Well, first of all, I'd like to ask you, what do you even make of the reports that the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, is close to making a decision on whether to contest in the 2023 presidential election on the platform of the APC? It's, um, for me, it's, it's, it's funny. Um, I, I, expect, I didn't expect that President Goodluck Jonathan would, um, after taking all the backlash that um, he took from the APC, and then also the APC, after all they said, about President Jonathan, they would even contemplate, you know, feeding him as a candidate. But that said, that's the way of um, politics in Nigeria. Um, they can say one thing today and mean a different thing tomorrow. There are there are no there are no permanent um, friends or enemies in politics, but just permanent interests. So as far as interest is concerned, just expect anything from them. So, how about the legal angle? Yeah, um, I, I do not, in all honesty, um, uh, agree with uh, the position of uh, Femi Falana SN. Uh, because the question is very germane. As at the time that Gulag Jonathan finished the term of Yaradua, was there a law that bar any vice president who is finishing the term of another president from contesting? That's the question. There was there a law like that? If you remember quickly, um, these issues had come up even in 2015. Um, one Unjoku, Seraku Unjoku, took Jonathan to court, challenging his eligibility to contest. Even though then there was no Section 137, this new Section 1373 was not in place. So his argument then was that Jonathan had uh, uh, took taken out of office. So the Court of Appeal ruled that no, that section talks about taking out of office an election. And so that was the position of the law. And to correct the anomaly that that debate generated, in the, on the 11th of June 2018, the uh, fourth alteration of the Constitution was effected and uh, signed into law by the president that if you've taken out of office or if you've ended the tenure of another president, even if it's for one day. But the question would be, we know fully well that laws are not made to apply retrospectively. That is the position of the Supreme Court in Ojokolobo and Adamu and Afolabi and governor of Oyo State that, if you permit me to read, it is a cardinal principle of law that the statute operates prospectively unless it is made to do so by clear express term. And the court further went uh, to say in uh, Afolabi and governor of this, uh, Oyo State, statute are to be interpreted as only applying to cases or situation which comes into his existence after they are passed, unless a retrospective effect is clearly intended. But this is forbidden for criminal matters. You can't make laws, even if the law permits you to make laws to apply retrospectively for criminal matters, it is forbidden. But in this case, does, when this law was made, is there any provision in this law that says it shall apply retrospectively? There's no provision like that. And, and so the question is, as at the time Jonathan finished the term of Yaradwa, was there a law barring any president, vice president, or deputy governor from finishing, from a, contesting a further term? There was no law like that. So in as far as there was no law like that, and by virtue of the uh, um, statute of um, interpretation. If you also, if you go to section two of the Interpretation Act, section two of the Interpretation Act states clearly that no law shall have a retrospective effect. And, and so, if no law shall have a retrospective effect, do you now say because this law had been passed after this man had 
you know, completed the term of another president in 2010 to um, 2011. And so to that extent, he can no longer contest. The answer is no. So I, I, I think um, it's a, a matter that is very important, very, very, very debatable. But this is my position. And I think most, most times what happens is, you, you know, lawyers will like to fly kites. And that's why I like your introduction. You know, it's a storm that had been introduced. Let's chew it. Let's debate it. And let the, law, the court take a position on it. But I can tell you that this will be the position of the court in the matter. You're, you're really confident that it's going to be the position of the court? Yes, because, like I said, as at the time this law was made, was because the law actually, even what is the mischief? that the law intends to cure. You know, before the uh, Jonathan contested election in 2015, there were debates, is he eligible, is he not eligible? And, and so, some people relied on um, the former section 136 to say he's not eligible. And, and when the Court of Appeal said, no, that's not the position of things, the, it's, it's very much eligible. And going forward, section 137, subsection 3 was introduced, henceforth, any other president that uh, completes the term, any other vice president or deputy governor that completes the term of another going forward. Not that, oh, if you have completed the term of another before, you shall not be eligible. That's not the position of the law. And so we also know that if the law intended it to be that way, the law should have stated clearly that both those that have completed and those that will complete in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's what, what, what usually happens when you have savings in the law. It says this law shall apply from so and so. And by virtue of the interpretation, the law comes into force from the day it was made, the day it was assented to, and not before. And so it cannot, by virtue of the Supreme Court interpretation also, the law cannot begin to apply to events and cases that happened before it was made. Otherwise, um, um, contrary to the provisions of the African Charter on Human Rights, the law will not be fair to all. Well, you sound very confident um, about how this might play out in the legal aspect. But what, what do you anticipate we might see if Goodluck Jonathan actually proceeds to purchase this nomination form on the part of the electorate? Like, like I said earlier, um, I need to make this clear. Mine is not to advise him whether to purchase or not. Because if you ask me clearly, I would say, look, you've garnered a lot of respect for what you did. Just rest, you know. But legally speaking... My position, legally speaking, is that he's still very much eligible. And I know that, to answer your question, if he decides to, I know a lot of people are going to go to courts mm. to challenge that position, that by virtue of Section 137, Sub 3, that he's no more eligible. And I can tell you that putting all of these arguments together, it will be an exercise in futility because the court will simply say, as at what point, when was the law made? When did he serve this term? So can you now say, okay, take for example, quickly, in 1999, if you remember, there were some governors that served in, 90, in 1992. Audu, Abuaka Audu of Kogi State was one of them. And so some person said he was no longer eligible, having taken oath of office in 1992, and that after uh, 2003, just before he died, that he was no longer eligible to contest because he had taken oath of office before. And the court heard that no. The Constitution was not, had not been enacted as at the time you're talking, referring to this out of office. So this 1999 Constitution comes into being from 1999, and so it cannot be applied retroactively, retrospectively. So, and, and so I'm not just saying this of, on, on the base of sentiment. I cited case laws. I took my time to do a research on this because I don't want to follow the bad work on. So I cited, that's why I'm relying on cases, case law to say, for now, let's not um, be quick to just, you know, throw these sections. And then also the court had consistently also heard that, you know, the Constitution, the Constitution specifically should not be read in isolation. It should be read holistically because it is um, almost like um, it is the organ that grinds the government activity daily. So you don't take you know, sections and read them in isolation. You must read the entire document holistically in conjunction with, you know, case laws. Now, I guess that um, 
um, Falano anticipated that people would say that you cannot um, argue based on retrospective law. But, but he said here that this um, 1999 constitution also prescribed a single term of four years and also four years for another term. That's if the person wins a second term, making a total of eight years. But that's in this case, if Jonathan contest, he will be serving more than eight years. That's and in the case of La Doja versus Einek, the Supreme Court actually refused to give, grant the 11 months extension to cover the period he was kept out of office through illegal impeachment. What? So These are two different that, issues. These are two different scenarios. That's why on that issue of four years or no four years, that issue had been dealt with by the Court of Appeal in the case of Serakos and Joku and um, Jonathan. Because the court, these were some of the issues that were submitted before the court for argument. That as at that time, the argument was that if Jonathan contests for another election for, for 2015, he would, contrary to the provision of the constitution that he would only do eight years, he would be doing um, 10 years. And the court said, no, the question is about eligibility. And so if he's eligible, he's eligible. And that is the position of the law today on that aspect. And then the case of Ladoja is a completely different matter. What Ladoja was asking for was there was an interregnum. You know, he was out of office for a time. And then um, when the court heard that time, he was out of office to be invalid. The, he asked that his tenure be extended. And the Interpretation Act also, Section 2, says you cannot, the, a judge cannot read into the law what is not there. And so the Court of Appeals in that case, the Supreme Court said, no, we cannot begin to give you an extension because the court and the constitution does not permit us to give you an extension. In the case of Peter Obi, in Peter Obi's matter, he had not been, he had not taken oath of office. His um, election, he was, oh no, sorry, he had taken oath of office, he was in office. And then they conducted another election, and then, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, Andy Uba was sworn in. And the man went to court, and the court heard that there was no vacancy in that office for an election to be conducted in the first place. The court also took cognizance of the fact that, you remember also quickly, that before now, these same senior lawyers will tell you that the tenure starts to run from the day of handing over, not the day you took out of office. And because the, the, the um, uh, Supreme Court said no, the day of you take out of office is when your tenure starts to run. That was when we now had, we started having staggered elections. Kid Peter will be, for example, because initially it was also, it was common to say that May 29th is sacrosanct. Whether another person had taken your three years is immaterial. That was what happened in the case of Peter B. And then also, lastly, on this same issue, Ladoja's case. Before now, senior advocates argued that section, by virtue of section 188 of the Constitution, once a governor is impeached, that section, subsection 10, that the court cannot look into it. And the Court of Appeal in the Baron said, no, you have to comply with section, subsection 1 to 9 before you evoke subsection 10 to cover whatever you have done. So in this same case, you cannot just read this section 1373 in isolation without the provisions of the Interpretation Act and then the case law to say as at the time this man ended the tenure of his late principal, was there any law barring him from contesting? The answer is no. And so the next thing is, can this new law made in 2018, 11th of June, be applied retrospectively to events that happened as at um, 2011, 2010? The answer is no. It's a common, simple, layman analogy also. I'm, I'm, if I may, I'm curious. What if things don't go the way you anticipate mm. and it actually goes in the direction of, you know, um, the sands like Femi Falano? What? That is why it is the law. <laughs> I understand. But there are two sides, yes. right, that are going to appear. Three, three, three sides. Three sides. Yeah. But what if things don't go the way you anticipate, even though you're talking about, it's very important to know that you can't backdate laws. But what if things actually go in the direction of the likes of Femi Falano and whatnot? And they challenge, good luck, Jonathan's um, um, aspirations to be president. And the court does, does not cite, does not see, you know, does not... This position. This position, and thank you for that. And then they see their position and stand by that. What further action might, be, might we see legally you, if we, that's we've, happened? That's why, first of all, that's why it is the law. That's why, no matter how uh, antagonistic lawyers are in court, at the end of the day, when the court makes a pronouncement, we say, as the court pleases. And then we shake hands, we go. 
and we can be on opposite side today, tomorrow we'll be on the same side. That's the law. And we've seen cases where candidates win election and the court says no, by virtue of an act or an omission, you are not the valid candidate for this office. And so the next candidate should take out of office. So if the court does not agree with this position, which I very much doubt, then what would happen is, okay, the next candidate you know, in the election will take out of office. But I doubt that the court will not agree with this position. It remains to be seen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so since we're already having this argument, is there a need to maybe further amend the Constitution so that we would not be having this kind of argument again in the future? No. Um, so this idea of, oh, let's go and amend, let's go and amend. We always say the law is what the court says it is. That is why the courts are empowered you know, with it, uh, 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 the rules of interpretation to interpret the position of the law. And the essence of, you know, interpreting is to challenge issues like this. It is a constitutional matter. You can take this moot issue before the Supreme Court via an originating summon for interpretation that by virtue of Section 137 and Section 2 of the Interpretation Act, can this law made uh, can this law be made to um, uh, have retrospective uh, effect? And the courts will spare us all of this back and forth. You know, but as at that time, you know, primaries would have been conducted because also, we, we also there, there, is, there is no time. So, but I think instead of taking the longer route of amending the constitution, you just take this point before the Supreme Court. It's, it's a, a constitutional matter. And so the Supreme Court can be caught of first instance. And... Boom, in, in a few days, the court will look into it and give a decision one way or the other. And speaking of an overworked legal system, it seems that uh, these elections are going to cause them to be quite even more overworked. Um, in many ways, um, especially since this is an APC matter that we're discussing, and it seems like there is quite a bit of uh, uh, legal issues going on there as well. So would you recommend uh, Dr. Goodluck Jonathan to run for... Uh, another time. I've already stated my opinion on okay. that matter. That left to me, as a person, I will humbly beg Gulag Jonathan to say, look, Go you've garnered a, enough respect, you know, for handing over, you know, and then the banters and then the, the, the brickbats that you received, you know, in the run-up to the build-up to the election. You've written your name in gold in the sand of time with that singular act. So I would humbly, if you ask me, humbly crave your indulgence Mr. President or as President, to go and rest. But on the legality, validity of him running for the office, I think he's still legally on all fours if he decides to. Well, lawyer and public affairs analyst, Liberal Sashoma, thank you so much for your analysis, and we'll see how this plays out eventually. Yes, yes we're all watching, and then uh, we hope that, you know, in, in days to come, that the Attorney General will take this hint and maybe just take this matter before the court. Let's see. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.